students. So I'm Louisa, your host for today. Alongside with me, we also have invited three Hong Kong youth students with us today. So we have Paco. He is currently our year two MBBS student staying in the Chisun College. At the same time, we also have Trey, our current BBA IBGM second year student staying in St. John's College. And of course, we also have Aizen, our engineering student staying in uh, Lee Heisen Hall. May we introduce, uh, we invite you guys to give us a brief sharing introduction. So hello everyone, um, I'm Paco. As Luisa has kindly mentioned, I am I'm currently undertaking my year two studies in MBBS. Um, I am a low-co student from Hong Kong and I studied the IB curriculum prior to university. Hi everybody, I'm Trey. I am American, but I grew up in Bulgaria and I also did the IB for high school. Thank you, Trey. Ethan? Uh, my name is Aisan. I'm from Iran, but I lived both in Iran and in Dubai. Um, I'm studying computer science, uh, which is under the uh, engineering faculty, and I'm very excited to be with all of you here today. Thank you all again for joining. So with this in mind, we will be moving forward to our admissions talk today. So today we will be talking about international and non jupas admissions. What does it mean? So there are two ways uh, to apply to Hong Kong U. If you are not taking the HKDSE, meaning the Hong Kong Diploma of Secondary Education Examinations, meaning that you will be joining us through the international stream or the non jupas stream. For the international stream, it is open to students from both the local and non-local students, meaning whether you are a Hong Kong student or overseas student, you will be applying through this, this, uh, this system if you are not taking the HKDSE. And this international stream includes students of a variety of international qualifications, such as IB, GCE, SAT, AP, or any other international or national qualifications. So as you can also see that uh, we actually have a Q&A function. Feel free to type uh, your questions and our colleague uh, will be here to answer your questions and we will also take some of the questions from the Q&A at the end, okay? So without further ado, let's start. So I believe everyone attending this uh, information session is somehow interested in knowing more about Hong Kong U. Here are some of the facts about Hong Kong U. And uh, we are also very proud to share with you, Hong Kong has consistently achieved a high position in the QS world ranking. In the most recent ranking, we actually are able to secure an impressive 26. Reflecting our commitment to excellence in education, research and innovation. And a commitment to academic ex excellence is further demonstrated by our uh, strong performance in the subject ranking. For example, in the uh, dentistry, we are actually globally recognized, it, ranked among the top dental school in the world. Our strong ranking attract not only faculty members, but also top talent, both locally and globally. And each year we receive an impressive average of 43,000 uh, applications from, for the undergraduate studies. In the 2023, we actually received applications from a wide range of countries with applicants representing 103 nationalities. And I'm sure that you should be able to locate your country in the list. Can you see your country in the list, Aizen and Trey and Paco, of course? So today, uh, today we will be exploring the various factors that come into play with when you are considering your undergraduate studies. And the first, we will be going into the uh, location and campus facilities. As you might all know that Hong Kong is not only just a vibrant and dynamic destination, but Hong Kong is actually also a gateway to the China and of course to the world. And we are also one of the safest, safest city in the world where you can freely go out during the night time. Wow, Trey, I see your pictures and Aizen too. Trey, can you share some of your, your fun things to do in Hong Kong? 
Yeah, I, I absolutely love Hong Kong. I think there's <laughs> there's really so much to do here. And it's made so easy because Hong Kong is really genuinely such a safe place. I feel safe walking around in remote areas late at night. It, it doesn't really matter. I, <laughs> I Hong Kong is really, really so safe. I can't emphasize that enough. It's also so convenient because the public transport, You there's no need for a car anywhere. You can get literally everywhere in Hong Kong with the public transport that is super safe, super convenient, and also very affordable. Even the the nightlife in Hong Kong is also great. Uh, it's it's very accessible. And if nightlife isn't your thing, there's also so much nature in Hong Kong as well. There's plenty of great hiking trails and beaches and and so many cultural activities as well. And there's so much to do in Hong Kong and it's so convenient and so safe. It's it's one of my favorite places in the world. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, before I came to Hong Kong, I didn't have much opportunities to try out the nightlife in um, the other countries that I was in. And um, I think one of the major shocks to me when I came here was the fact that um, everyone uh, at from uh, 18 upwards uh, would be out from 12 a.m. up to maybe 6 a.m. sometimes if if it's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And um, we, um, we would none of us ever felt like we didn't have a way to get home or we felt like we were unsafe in the city. Um, there's always um, public transport, like Trey said, uh, to get you anywhere that you want in Hong Kong. And um, we, I think... The safety of Hong Kong is one of the things that makes it uh, truly special. Uh, whether you're hiking or whether you're out with your friends or whether you're alone, uh, I think you've never felt like, uh, you would never feel like um, you are in danger. And for our other audience, um, just also for your information, the University of Hong Kong is actually located right in the middle. So Trey or Aizen or Paco, do you want to share a little bit more about it? Um, so, um, as you know, Hong Kong is a very vibrant city and our university is located right in the middle of our city, so around the central area. So um, a lot of facilities are accessible just within minutes uh, of public transport, whether if you're a gym guy, there's always sports facilities in the university for you to use. Um, as Trey and Eisen has mentioned, nightlife is just in central right around the corner. So it's very accessible and you can just get anywhere you want with your friends during the day, during the night, anytime, at any given moment of notice. Yeah. Yeah. And just just to echo what you said, Louisa, like I, I don't think it gets better than the location of HKU. You really oh. are in the heart of Hong Kong and it's so accessible by by public transport. And there's so much to do in the area as well. And it's it's really fantastic. And the dorms are also like right right next to campus and it's such a great location. And of course the dorms are also very affordable. And, and so it, it really makes uh, exploring Hong Kong so much easier because of HKU's location. Yeah, and also we are really centrally located, meaning that we can actually eat anywhere in Hong Kong. So moving on, so also want to share with you all that we actually have over 17 residential halls and colleges. So our 17 residential hall cater to a wide range of student preference and needs from single gender halls to mixed gender hall, as well as different type of hall based on uh, different interests and also cultural background. So I know that Aizen, Paco, and Trey are also staying at our residential hall. Trey, can you share a little bit more our residential hall, particularly St. John's? Sure. Uh, HKU has a, a variety of residential halls that cater to different people's personalities, from people that maybe prefer to be a little more secluded and focus on their studies, to people that really want like a true university experience and to socialize all the time. There, there's the whole spectrum for for you that has you covered. St. John's in particular is where I've been staying for the past year, and it's really fantastic. It's a very diverse and international community. Even within the hall, we actually have an alumni network where you get to meet previous hallmates. Each of the 10 floors has its own unique culture with its own events. And throughout the year, because of the diversity, we also have specific cultural events related to all the different nationalities that we have. So for example, we have Chinese New Year events and mid-autumn festival events. And also for the large Indian community, we also host a Diwali night every year. Wow. And so there's always so much going on that really embraces the diversity of the hall. And, and it's just such a such a great experience that I that has been a big highlight of my life in Hong Kong. I can also see that you were celebrating, you said a Chinese New Year or that is a Hey, what what is that? Go Sam Bao say what? Can you share a little bit more about this? It? Is a, <laughs> this is a this is a HKU tradition that uh, before final exams every year, 
uh, at least in our hall, we all get together and we do Chinese calligraphy <laughs> and we'll, we'll all have a meal together in order to wish everybody good luck for their final exams. And we do that every semester. That's interesting. What about you, Aizen? Uh, well, I currently stay in Lee Heisen Hall. It's a more uh, local hall, I would say. Uh, but I don't think I've ever had so much fun <laughs> staying someplace. Um, I, the, the people on my floor are very welcoming. And um, through this network, I've been able to um, understand the local culture more, which is uh, one reason why I came to Hong Kong, because uh, I wanted to see um, how everyone here lived and the beliefs and the culture that they have, because I think it's a very rich and very uh, distinct culture. And um, I think no matter what hall that you choose, whether you want to go to St. John's, whether you want to um, have a more local experience in Lee Heisen, um, I think that you will have events that will cater to your needs and um, you will always feel included. And um, there's always someone there that is uh, willing to listen to uh, any problems that you might have. Oh, I actually don't see any pictures of you here. As a local student, do you get to meet uh, with any friends? But you're actually also staying in one of our residential hall too. Right. So um, I think mm -hmm. I speak for a lot of local students when it comes to hall. So I'm here to bust a myth that <laughs> um, there are actually opportunities for you to live in a hall, albeit a residential college, that you can meet new friends without doing all of the commitments and also taking up a lot of your studying time. So the myth is that traditional halls take up at least half of your week just on their hall mm -hmm. activities. But the one I'm living in right now, so Chisan College is one of the residential colleges. So you could just opt into activities that you like, but that doesn't mean you don't get the same enriching experiences that um, Trey and Eisen got in their halls because um, the postgraduate and undergraduate ratio and also the ratio between locals and international students is almost exactly the same. So um, we could also meet new friends from all walks of life, essentially, in our, let's say, cooking events, um, hiking clubs, or even high table dinners that I think we're going to mention a little bit more um, in the future slides. But um, even if you're a local student, joining our halls still gives you the same vibrant and enriching experience. Mm. So I want to ask you a tricky question. Is it difficult to apply for a hall? Perhaps, uh, Trey, you want to start? I think it depends on your halls. Luckily, you get to, to have a few choices. St. John's applications are actually separate from the whole uh, HKU uh, application. So uh, if you don't get into St. John's, you still have other options that you can choose. Uh, I, I would think that uh, it's not completely guaranteed to get a hall, but I think for international students, it's usually a little bit easier. And HKU does try and support people coming from overseas. Uh, I would say it it really depends on on your hall though, but I think in general it's quite reasonable to get in. Yeah, I think as long as you um, apply early and as long as you don't miss the deadlines, um, then you should be okay uh, because there's always support um, whether in dorms or out dorms. There's always support uh, that HKU offers. So I guess the key is really to apply early, right? Yes. <laughs> Paco, do you want to add anything? <laughs> um, I can echo a bit on on the hall application. So for local students, um, you are not at a disadvantage compared to international students. Um, you guys have the same competition as long as you're um, applying uh, to the same halls. So some halls look for commitments for sports, for music. Other halls look if you have the same vision or idea that you want to bring into the hall with them. So um, it tends to vary from application to application, but as long as you have a passion for that particular hall, um, I think you, you guys have quite a high chance to get in. Good to know, thank you. So moving on, employability also actually plays an important role when considering undergraduate studies, right? So Hong Kong, Hong Kong has actually earned it, uh, the prestigious recognition of being ranked as the 10th most employable university graduate in the world. And many of our graduates will actually receive our three offers upon their graduation. And uh, our graduate in particular earns an average of 30K Hong Kong per month, which is also the highest among other institutions in Hong Kong. In addition, uh, for long, local Hong Kong residents, the HKSAR government actually allows long local graduates to stay and work in Hong Kong for up to two years. Aizen, do you think this is something that you are looking for? 
Uh, I think it's something that is very attractive, um, especially for someone in my field. I think um, there are a, a lot of jobs that are uh, engineering oriented, uh, computer science oriented. Um, for example, this summer I worked as um, an intern at a startup and um, I'm applying for um, some more like I'm trying out the uh, financial side. So I'm trying out to um, apply to banks uh, so that I can get an internship next summer. So um, I think before I came, I had uh, no idea what the employability would be like in Hong Kong uh, because um, I um, was just not that uh, well-researched and well-versed. But uh, once I came here, I realized that um, no matter what experience you have, as long as you're um, interested and you're passionate about uh, finding a uh, good job, not just a normal job, a job that uh, you're satisfied in, then you definitely will. And um, I know after graduation, I know uh, a few of my non-local friends, um, they are working at Morgan Stanley right now, mm -hmm. at JP Morgan, uh, with uh, very good salaries and with very good support from um, both HKU and their companies. So um, there is no worries there. And plus, if you stay for three years, um, then you have an opportunity to uh, get a PR, which wow. for, uh, could be could be attractive. For me, it's yeah. uh, very attractive because I love Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anything you want to add, Trey? Uh, I, I think Ison really, really got it pretty comprehensively. I'd, I'd say HKU has plenty of great resources to support students in, in their careers and even just on the whole university level, but also like on the individual program level, they, they really do emphasize practical career training throughout the curriculum. Thank you. And uh, one thing I wanted yeah. to add is that um, there are, it's not just that if you use you to find your job, uh, HQ does, like Trey said, provide resources for you. Like there is uh, this portal that we have that we can, um, it's called NetJobs, that we can uh, look for um, posted jobs and we can apply to those jobs. Um, so HQ, um, I think really it provides an edge uh, in that regard. That is very good. Thank you. So moving on the campus culture and also environment. So it is actually worth noting that we use English as our main medium of instruction and assessment. So um, meaning that even if you are in a small tutorial or even if you're in a lab session, and of course in our classroom, you will we will only be using English. In addition to academic study uh, doing uh, your undergraduate uh, studies, uh, we also offer a wide range of clubs and associations so that our students can join to establish meaningful connections and enhance uh, uh, your, your um, social uh, skills. Ethan, did you join any clubs or any association? Uh, yes, last year I joined the South Asian Society and uh, we had multiple events uh, recently, the one that I remember we had a holy event, uh, which is uh, an Indian uh, thing mostly, where um, I'd, I'd never done something like this before. We went to the beach and um, we uh, threw around some uh, biodegradable colors, and it was uh, just a very interesting um, view of their culture. Wow, that's good. Trey, did you join anything? Yeah, so as a member of St. John's, I participate in a lot of our activities. Last year, I mainly did basketball. And one of my favorite parts is that if you join the activities within the halls, there's an inter-hall league where all the halls will play against each other for the various sports and cultural teams. I'm also the president of the International Student Society for the Business School. And that's been a really great experience because the faculty has been so, so supportive in trying to help support international students and make sure that they feel very welcomed in Hong Kong. I've also been a student ambassador as well. So I can see that you have different opportunities like throughout your, your stay in Hong Kong. What about Paco as a local student? Um, so for my hall, I also joined the basketball club and I also joined the cooking club. So we had like um, bi-weekly meetups where you can, you know, like get to together and make desserts, bake some um, uh, cookies and stuff. Um, it's pretty fun, especially in a hall where you can mingle with other residents um, where you probably wouldn't have met because you guys aren't on the same floor. Um, apart from that, I am also um, similar as Trey, a student ambassador in the medical faculty. So um, you also meet a lot of people from all walks of life and you tend to organize a lot of events for undergraduates or even incoming prospective students. And I think it's a pretty rewarding experience throughout the year. 
So Hong Kong is actually a vibrant and dynamic destination renowned for the cultural diversity and limitless opportunity. It is also a global city. Asen, did you meet any friends also coming from Iran and Trey, uh, Bulgaria? Uh, yes, I. Um, we have a very, very small society here. Um, and I'm friends with uh, uh, Iranians both from my school and both uh, people that I met on campus. Um, past that, I've also, if you look at the Christmas tree, that's <laughs> me. That's my first week in Hong Kong. Wow. And uh, I went out with a few of my uh, friends. And then um, I think one of the best things about Hong Kong are the friends that you find. And I know people from uh all over the world, like from uh, Panama, from Kazakhstan, from Nigeria. And I think it's just a very uh, rich and different experience. Well, Bulgaria is quite the small country, so I've only encountered like two or three Bulgarians here. But actually, that's been kind of a benefit because it's pushed me to like really branch out and meet people from different cultures. And that's been a really an enriching experience in Hong Kong because you get people really from all over the world and you get such an enriching cultural experience of like meeting different people and, and understanding different cultures. And th that's been really fun. That's good to know. So in, in additionally, our students are provided with a multitude of learning opportunities that extend beyond the classroom. So we offer uh, study tours, discovery trips, and also different types of um, learning experience, especially for the IBGM program. For example, all students are required to complete at least one semester of studies at an institution abroad. Usually, it is, I believe, in the second semester of their year three study. Trey, can you talk a little bit more about your experience as, a, as an IBGM student? And IBGM what... is, is yeah. really fantastic. Um, they have so many resources because it's a small cohort. They're really able to dedicate a lot of resources and attention to us. We have a lot of company visits, like you can see for uh, Blackstone. This was an exclusive one for IBGM. And Blackstone, for those of you that are unaware, is the biggest alternative asset manager in the world. Very prestigious company. And they do these uh, talks for us that are exclusively for IBGM students. There's plenty of mentorship programs as well that are with IBGM alumni from previous years. They also offer a lot of different career support, career talks, like I said. And uh, in terms of my my career, I'm I'm only a second year student now, but this last summer I had the pleasure of working at uh, Hyatt, the hotel company, in their corporate office in Hong Kong, which uh, was a really fantastic experience. So anything special about like is this the reason attracts you to come to Hong Kong? Yeah, I there were so many reasons that attracted me to Hong <laughs> Kong. But I think especially IBGM seeing the really catered support that they offer to the students and the great opportunities that they offer uh, within that small cohort was very attractive for me to come to Hong Kong, as well as all of the international opportunities that I get, such as with the exchange. Good to know. So, Aizen, can you also share a little bit more about yourself and have you been receiving any internship offer? <laughs> um, as I said, yes. Um, I uh, did an internship in summer. Um, it was part of the uh, government STEM scheme, so for um, STEM majors and uh, some related majors such as like psychology. Um, there, there is an opportunity op offered by the government uh, where you receive um, a pretty good salary. Uh, you receive uh, 11K per month. Um, and it's increasing every year, by the way, uh, to work uh, with no experience most of the time, to uh, work with um, different companies, uh, depending on what you like. Um, I decided to work as an app developer and an AI developer uh, with a startup. And um, depending on uh, what your major is and what your interests are, uh, I know many people who stayed over with me this summer and uh, found good internships. And uh, past that, there's always opportunities, like Lisa said, there is always opportunities uh, to go to exchange abroad. And um, I'm going to Montreal myself hopefully next semester. So um, I'll get to uh, experience those opportunities as well. We also provide a multitude of opportunities to our students to broaden their horizon and engage in cutting edge research with well-renowned universities. All students are actually highly encouraged to take uh, take on ex an exchange and study abroad. You can partake in a semester or a year-long exchange at one of our 403 exchange partners, institution in 47 countries. So next stop, maybe the most important one, the actual program studies and also reputations of Hong Kong Guild. 
So if you are interested in applying to the University of Hong Kong and also exploring the diverse academic opportunities we offer, we are here to guide you through the different program avail available across our 10 faculties. Hong Kong U consists of 10 faculties and uh, with 49 undergraduate program, uh, degrees and also 100 major or minors. We offer three types of program under the, our 10 faculties, our four year curriculum, uh, our double and professional degree, and also university collaborative program. So for professional programs such as uh, architecture, dentistry, and medicine, so uh, may we invite uh, Paco, who is actually studying in medicine, to talk about it? Right, so I am currently undertaking MBBS2. Um, I was part of the IB May 2022 cohort, and I can share a little bit about how the medical degree works. So before that, so why did I choose medicine at all? So um, it started from like an interest in biology and in humans back in my high school years. And I think medicine is more of a promise to care and to save lives. And it's a pretty well-respected profession in the community. So that's why I chose medicine as my future career. So a little bit more technical stuff about the professional degree. It is a six-year program, so consisting of two parts. So we have our preclinical years in years one and two. And in your final three years, years four, five, and six, you will be rotating around wards um, for your clinical years, essentially. So... Um, there's two main points into choosing which institution to study medicine in. Um, so one of our major um, points that HKU Med is very proud of is its problem-based learning or PBO in short. So um, it is an integration-based approach. So um, you would be tackling a clinical presentation or a clinical problem as a group. And it's a good way to integrate your scientific knowledge that you have learned in lectures or practicals to clinical diagnosis, which prepares you well for a clinical year. So in your final three years, you aren't just translating the knowledge to a paper that's um, on your examinations, but on the patient themselves. So this problem-based learning is a very good way to practice that in your first few years. Um, it also helps to polish your research and your communication skills with others. As you guys know, medicine is not a single player game. You have to work with nurses, with physiotherapists. So that also helps with it. Another special thing about our MBBS program is our enrichment year, which um, other institutions in Hong Kong providing the medical degree does not provide their students with. So it is in our year three. So you have the whole year to yourself. You can select humanitarian services, whether it's NGOs or attachments to international organizations, such as WHO, you can go on exchange and intercalation degrees. So you could fast track your career perhaps, or even go to other universities that kind of fills in a lot of people's wishes to kind of spend a little bit of time overseas to ex experience the life of what it is in England, in America, et cetera. And that's also something a lot of my peers, whether um, in HKU or prospective students wish that they could have in their um, long kind of exhausting medical career. Um, you could also opt for research um, during the year. So if there's something that you're interested in, um, you guys can apply for it. And most of the time our school, our faculty would submit, um, would approve your proposals and projects. So it's kind of a year where you can explore your own interests apart from medicine and spend some free time from the hectic MVBS work. So apart from that, there's also the bigger picture. So you are a local student now, you have decided to study medicine. So why not go overseas? So one of the major concerns for me was the tuition fees. So um, the tuition fees for local and international students abroad for medical schools in UK and in US varies uh, vastly. So you would be paying quite a bit of tuition fee. And if you do not have enough scholarships to support your tuition fees, it makes it in the to go overseas. Um, another thing to consider is the employability of the medical career that you would be undertaking in the future. So um, as you know, Hong Kong has a very stable medical system. Um, the uh, pay grades and even like opportunities for you to undergo the um, specialty that you wish 
to enter um, is pretty much um, since um, Hong Kong has kind of like a lack of medical doctors and clinicians right now. So you're kind of like there's a promise for from the government to employ you upon the uh, graduation of your studies. So um, once you finish your six years curriculum in HKU Med, you go into the seventh year as an intern um, at the hospital authority. And that is quite a stable path towards um, developing your career in the long run. So other than so, studying, what do you do? <laughs> so a lot of people think that um, medical school is quite hectic and packed with a lot of lectures and practicals. While that is slightly true, that doesn't mean you can't take free time out of it and you can still enjoy your time in your studies. So in the upper right corner, you can see a picture of me and my group in the laboratory. So that's quite a fun time within the week. We get like dissections or laboratory assignments every week or so. So you can hang out with our group and do some hands-on experience and translating what you've learned in your lectures into kind of like a more practical um, situations. Um, in the bottom right corner is a high table dinner of my college. So um, we do these every few, uh, we do this, we do this every month. So we have a speaker which is renowned in their industry to come share a little bit about their work to us. And we use that chance to make go and meet new friends. Um, the scenery in Sassin Road is pretty nice as well. So um, I also take some time off medical work to act as a student ambassador or join and organize other events. So all in all, your medical school career is not just confined to what you learn in class, but also much more than that. So it depends on how you plan your own schedules and whether or not you want to in get involved in other stuff apart from your studies, but the opportunities are always there for you. Thank you, Paco. So in addition, we offer, also offer a comprehensive four-year curriculum that allows our students to gain a well-rounded uh, educational experience. So Ethan, can you talk about uh, our, I know, I know that you are studying in the Faculty of, Faculty of Engineering. Uh, yes. Um, so as a computer science student, I have a lot of uh, free credits that I can take. Uh, that means that past the course requirements that you have, past the uh, discipline requirements that you have, uh, you are usually allowed to take some free courses. And um, in my case, I am uh, permitted to take uh, up to two majors and three minors uh, based off of the credits that um, I have on my course. Uh, what I personally decided to do is uh, that I've decided to just uh, stick to my free electives and um, take it a little bit slower on the academic um, grind <laughs> and uh, just focus more on computer science. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I haven't um, dabbled in a few other courses. I've taken an education course. Um, I've taken um, so a sociology course. And uh, depending on what you want to do and depending on the interests that you have, uh, HQU is very open in um, providing opportunities for you to try out uh, different uh, specialties and different uh, combinations of courses. This is very good to know. So under the four-year curriculum, we have the HKU Business School, Faculty of Arts, Engineering, Social Sciences, and, Sh and Faculty of Science, where you will be able to design your specialties. So here are some of the majors uh, and minor for your reference. At the same time, we also have our newly uh, uh, new program, the Big Data Oriented Program. I will move forward to the uh, other program, the University Collaborative Program. This uh, actually our dual degree program where we collaborate with uh, different universities such as UCL, UC Berkeley, Cambridge, and uh, Sciences Po. As you can see that Hong Kong U is committed to providing global opportunities for students to broaden their horizon and also expand their professional network. We have eight dual degree program and uh, eight dual degree and collaborative program. And uh, you can see that after the uh, after the uh, these uh, dual degree, students will be receiving two uh, certificates from two uh, institutions. And this program span, far, span across different disciplines. So um, here is uh, the screen captures of the, uh, the details about our dual degree program. If you want to know more, feel free to do a screen captures or you can scan the QR code. 
But just a friendly reminder, if you are interested in learning more about our dual degree program or in applying, so make sure to go to our website to check the details. For example, for the for the uh, PKU law program, you know that the program will last for five years. So your first year to end first year and to and the and till the two and two and a half year you will be studying in Hong Kong U. And for the last two and a half years, you will be studying at PKU. So if you want to know more about our dual degree program, you may also join our upcoming webinar session on September 22nd. So feel free to scan the QR code. Last stop, financial considerations. So now let's talk about an important aspect of pursuing undergraduate studies, be it in Hong Kong or elsewhere. We understand that a cost is a significant consideration for many students and families. At Hong Kong U, we strive to provide a high quality education that is accessible and affordable. Our tuition fee are competitive, offering excellent value for the opportunities and resources available to our students. And uh, for the local student, our tuition fee is 42,000 uh, approximately. And also for our non-local student, it is uh, 182,000. At the same time, we also provide different scholarships for our uh, applicants. So uh, can uh, perhaps, uh, Paco, can you talk about I know that you all receive uh, different kind of scholarships. Do you mind share about it? Um, so I'm currently holding the um, entrance scholarship for president scholars. So it is a merit-based scholarship based on um, the results of your high school examination. So for me, it was the IB examination. Um, it is important to stress that you don't have to separately apply for the scholarship. So once you send in your applications for undergraduate programs into HKU, um, they would automatically consider you for the entrance scholarships based on your merit that you have uh, achieved at your public examinations. So um, that's a bit about the entrance scholarships that I got. Great. Yeah, so I have the HKU Future Leader Scholarship, which of course considers academic results as well, but it's more of a basket of factors where it also considers your extracurriculars and, and you more as a person. My tips for applying for this is to really emphasize your uniqueness and the value that you bring to the university and to the community of Hong Kong outside of just your academic results in terms of how you're actually going to contribute and what value you bring uh, and what what initiative you can take as, as a leader. Thank you. What about Ethan? Uh, so I hold the He for She Impact Champion Scholarship. And um, I... It, is a scholarship that uh, is awarded to you based on your uh, academic awards, uh, but also to what how you try to achieve the he for she objectives. So um, if you're interested, you can take a look on, online to see what the objectives exactly are. Um, but um, it is a scholarship that uh, provides support for those who um, have tried to make a better society, to make a more equal society. And um, I think when I was applying for the scholarship, it has a separate application. Um, I did not think that maybe, I thought that maybe the requirements did not apply to me as much uh, because um, I think you always think that there are people who have done more in the society and who have had greater achievements. Um, but I think my tip to you would be that um, if you think that uh, you are right or you are eligible for um, scholarships such as this, um, there is no harm in applying. And um, there's no harm also in applying as early as possible so that uh, you have the time to um, perhaps uh, gain a scholarship with HKU. That's good to know. So if you want to know more about our scholarships offering, please feel free again to scan the QR code to learn more about the applications. As Paco said, for the entrance scholarship, you do not need to apply that separately. So going on to the how to apply to Hong Kong U, we welcome uh app we, up, we welcome applications coming from around the world, holding all uh, different uh, curriculum, IB diploma, GCE, Canadian regional or national examinations. 
So this is the timeline for this year. So our applications uh, will be opening on September 20th. So make sure to apply uh, in the first round. So meaning that you will need to submit your applications uh, by this date. And uh, if you are able to submit that, then we will, we, we will pro most probably be able to uh, invite you to the interview if available uh, at the end of December, okay? And rolling admissions will continue until August 22nd. So applying to Hong Kong UA is very important to check the expected lower boundaries on the Hong Kong U website. And of course, you will also need to fulfill all these listed criteria such as the English language proficiency, the second language profici proficiency and also program requirement. For the second language uh, requirement, uh, this is actually a language other than English. It is suggested you should be uh, taking uh, these, uh, these exam earlier so that you can submit the second language requirement documents by August so that we can convert your conditional offer to a firm offer. If you want to know more about how to fulfill the second language requirement, feel free again to scan the QR code. But if you are actually taking the IBDP diploma, you will also, you will already be able to fulfill such requirement. So if you want to know more about international qualifications, again, go to our website, search Hong Kong U International Admissions or scan the QR code where you will be directed actually to the uh, to the program page where you will be able to see the subject requirement such as if you're interested in applying to the medicine program you will see the subject requirement that we require you to have the chemistry in higher level and make sure also to look at the bottom or the other additional requirement or if there might be interview so going back to our applications in the hong kong application portal you have the options to choose up to three program preferences. We strongly advise you to use up all three program choices, okay? And it is also worth noting that the first program choice should be the program that you really want to join, that you really want to go, okay? The second and the third program choice, they're actually equally weighted. And you will, you might, and you will receive multiple offers depending on the situation, depending on uh, your interview or your, your predicted grade. Result announcement will be available uh, from December and onward. So this is actually the screen captures of the application portal. So for example, if you are interested in uh, applying to our, um, uh, for example, Bachelor of Laws, um, you will see that we actually prefer you to put it as the first choice. So for all these program uh, requirements, please again, refer to our website for latest updates. Along with the uh, with the applications, you will also be needed to provide uh, also the uh, the supporting documents and also personal statement and also uh, reference. You will be uh, you will be requested to uh, upload one personal statement for your three program choices. And of course, you will also need to nominate uh, your school counselor so that they will be able to update uh, the predicted grade. And some reminder for IB student, it is very, very important for you to authorize Hong Kong U to receive the results. And also again, a, a, a reminder, make sure to fill out all these three program choices. And come on, common app is no longer supported. So if you are interested in applying to Hong Kong U, make sure to submit the application through the Hong Kong U admissions portal. And it is also a good idea to have a practice to check your email frequently because we will be sending reminders or inviting you for an interview via email. And if you might be interested to know, so how do we, how can I, if I don't ha have access to email, then at the same time, you can actually uh, log into the applications portal to check this program status. So we understand that it may be difficult for you to visualize uh, if Hong Kong U is a suitable destination for your undergraduate studies. And that is why we are proud to introduce the Hong Kong U Academy for the Talented. 
So we actually have is our have one of the student coming from UWC Bolster. She is Olivia. So uh, it was her first time coming to Hong Kong, and she actually took the uh, Hong Kong U Legal Academy for the Talented Program. Paco, our vice chairman of the Hong Kong Academy uh, Alumni Association, can you please also share with us what is HKU Academy and why is it to be exact? Um, so to put it short, it is a taste of university life. So we understand that we have a lot of secondary school, high school students who have a lot of talents and potentials, and we want to provide them with the necessary environment to grow and prosper as they prepare themselves for university and the life beyond. So um, we believe that holistic development encompasses not just academic, though also rich and diverse experiences outside the classroom. So we're here to sharpen the students' social collaborative skills, also their hands-on skills as well. And this has kind of been proven to be increasingly crucial in a time where our world is dynamic and rapidly changing, one that we have all experienced under the pandemic. So how to become a member or how can we join the program? Right. So interested um students can join the academy by either one of two ways. So by invitation. So every, excuse me. So every year the Academy for the Talented sends out invitations to schools all around the world, not just Hong Kong. So um these emails probably go to your school counselors or the teachers responsible for kind of like future studies, etc. So uh, we will be inviting the schools to nominate top students from respective levels to join us as a member of the academy. So um, you could look out for emails in your school accounts and also reach out to the teachers involved. Um, but apart from invitation, we also realize that sometimes um, your talents might not be um, recognized in school or your um, talents in sports or arts are not like well supported within the school curriculum. So we also offer a path for you to become the member of an for the academy by the way of talent search. So um, on the academy website, there is a talent search portal. So we welcome applications from students ranging from um, forms two to six or grades nine to 12 equivalent um, who have excelled in STEM innovation languages. So in the portal, you guys can apply based on your own talents. So you would write up a short statement explaining why you think your talents would um, help the academy and also help HKU or just a society in general in supporting your application and becoming a member of the academy. So here is like a sneak peek of the timetable for next year. So this is the flagship academic programs which we offer every summer. So which spans across the 10 university faculties and various disciplines. So these are tailor-made programs for our team. So it is there to deliver you an authentic experience of university life. So that ranges from your class and lectures to the hall activities or even just hanging around um, in campus. So these include like hands-on workshops with renowned HKU professors or for business programs, we have interactive pitching sessions with real, um, let's say partners from law firms or partners from um, huge business firms who are exploring the cutting edges of technology. So it's kind of a program where we mesh everything that we think a secondary school student would want and also those that could um, kind of help them achieve their own full potentials and also to showcase their talents um, in places apart from their high schools in preparation of university studies and life beyond. Right. Thank you. So for uh, we are also excited to announce that we will be hosting again the Hong Kong Year Information Day on October 28th, where we will open our doors to the public. So this event offers fantastic opportunities for prospective students, parents, and community to explore the Hong Kong Year campus, interact with faculties and our students. At the same time, we are actually coming to your countries, perhaps. So if you're interested to join our uh, local event at your in your country, feel free to scan this QR code to, uh, to do an RSVP. So if you would like to download our latest international admissions uh, brochure, please also feel free to scan this QR code. And if you would like to connect with us, also please, again, another QR code for you. 
So we are actually coming almost to the end of the session, but I know that we have been receiving many, many questions. So let me see what kind of, what kind, what questions we have. Let me see. So we have a question, okay, asking about, do I have to write more than one personal statement? Because uh, as I have just mentioned that we, they can choose for up to three program. So the answer is you will only um, be allowed to write, to write one personal statement. Okay, but of course, uh, do you have any tips about it? I have three program choice but I can only write one personal statement. So my suggestion would be to find the commonalities between all your three program choices. Trey, do you have any suggestion? What did you write for your personal statement, if you don't mind to share? My personal statement, I, I wrote it kind of similar to the, the UK format a little bit. I, I think it's just emphasizing a bit of the um, holistic things of you as a person, not just focusing on your academic results, trying to focus on the value that you bring to the university. Those are those are kind of the the key points, I think, also emphasizing your extracurriculars. And of course, why are you actually interested in both the program that you're planning to study and also why HKU and why Hong Kong being specific about like your actual motivations for applying? Mm. That's good. So we also have another question. Do we have to submit all the documents at the same time? Can we submit documents later when we receive from our school? So the answer is yes. So as you know that you, if you are able to catch up with the application timeline, you obviously will be submitting in November, but then we understand that your results will be available in July. So for our international applicants, we recommend and we also highly encourage all of you to update your applications whenever it is available. Okay. Can I uh, can I chime in? I yes. I see a lot of people asking questions about the minimum IB results. It's going to vary by the program and the major that you're applying for. So you can go onto the HKU website and they have a really detailed breakdown of kind of the expected uh, boundaries of admission for each of the individual programs. So depending on what you're applying for, you need to go check specifically for that. There's no generally accepted score. That's good. So we also have another question. If students predicted grade fall just short of the minimum boundary, will the university still consider to offer the student a conditional offer? So in Hong Kong U, we actually don't have a exact uh, cut off time, cut off line. Uh, applications are actually considered uh, on a competitive uh, basis. The expected lower boundaries is only a lowest score achieved by student in the cohort, in the past cohort. So that is just a reference, but it is going to be a like, sort of a good indications. Okay. But it is not the exact cut. So I guess, again, it is just a reference. But again, also meeting the lower boundaries does not guarantee your admissions at the same time, okay? Because again, in Hong Kong U, we uh, treasure the holistic evaluation of uh, all of our applicants. So you will see that if you log into the portal, we will actually ask you to submit all the other documents such as your extracurricular activities, your personal statement, and also references from your referee. So I also have another question. Will the places for A-level students are less than IBs as the IB results will be released a month earlier than A-level? No, the answer is no. We actually uh, make decisions based on your predicted grade or your um, historical background. The actual grade, actual grade are for us to confirm your offer. And that's why in the previous slide, I encourage you all to upload uh, your, second language, your second language documents to us earlier so that we can confirm your offer earlier, okay? And also for IBDP uh, student, it is very important, again, to authorize Hong Kong U to download your result for, so that we can convert your conditional offer to the firm offer.
so I guess uh, we have we are able to answer the majority of the questions, and I know our colleague uh, have been uh, answering your questions through the through the chat box. So we are coming to the end of the session, but before we end today's session, may we invite all of our student help, our student ambassador to give us three words about anything to our audience, to our prospect students, or also to the family families abroad. So I would say uh, the three words that I have for describing um, what kind of a life HK would offer you would be one full of uh, opportunity, that's number one. Uh, HK would be supportive and um, your life might be a little bit unpredictable, meaning that um, you come here with um, certain plans that you have and certain uh, aspirations that you have, um, but it's okay if they change. And um, HQ is here to support you and your dream. Yeah, we are here to support you all. Trey? I think I would say that my experience has been very diverse because Hong Kong is such a diverse place, both in, in the things to do and the people that are here and the opportunities available. I would say that it's very adventurous because Hong Kong is such a vibrant city and there's so much going on. And I would also say that it's filled with growth. Thank you, Trey. Paco? Um, so I think for the transition into university and the first few months at university might be a bit overwhelming, but in a good sense. So you are entering a new environment, you're meeting new friends, you have a lot of freedom into choosing what you want to do and the friends you meet and the activities you hold. So even though it's a little bit overwhelming in terms of um, time scheduling or even just your studies, I think it's in a good way. Um, it's also pretty intriguing for a local student entering into university where you get to meet with a lot of international students from diverse backgrounds. That's something that even if you join quite a lot of activities in high school in Hong Kong, you could not have done before. And I think it's also quite rewarding in general, especially giving back as a student ambassador in our um, second year or third year to just guide our freshmen through the university and kind of like um, translating what we've learned and what we have experienced for them to nurture and grow throughout their four to six years here at the university. Thank you, Paco, Aizen, and Trey. So it is our honor to have all of you joining us uh, today from all around the world. So we look forward to meeting you very soon, uh, be it in your countries or in our Hong Kong U Information Day or through the Hong Kong U Academy for the Talented. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, scan this QR code and connect with us. As Aizen and Paco and Trey said, we are here to support you all. And we look forward to meeting you uh, anytime, anywhere. Thank you very much and have a good night, everybody. Thank you.